Well, well, well. Once again, I am back. Coming at you guys with another podcast interview. And this evening, we have a young lady that uh, that, that comes from Facebook. She is a truck driver. How long you been driving? How, how long you been driving? I've been driving trucks for two years. She's been driving for two years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, what I what I'm about to do is introduce this young lady. But I need to introduce her by her tag name, and I believe her tag name is Truck Her. Right? That's your tag name. That's correct. All right. All right. So what we about to do right now is bring on Miss Truck Her to the show. All right, all right, all right, Miss Her. So what is going on with you? You you before we even jump into the podcast, man, this young lady says she's over there drinking some gin and tonic. Gin and tonic on a Tuesday. This is Tuesday, right? Yeah. On a Tuesday in the evening. And again, you, you're going to leave in the morning. Like, what time in the morning you 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 going to leave out? I'm not leaving in the morning. Oh, you? Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I'm going to control my own schedule. I'm my own boss. Oh, she's her own boss. Man. Well, well, your own bossness. Go ahead and let everybody know about yourself and uh, and what you do. My name is Ashlyn Davis. Uh, I'm 28 years old. I've been driving trucks for two years. I've been owning my truck since I got my first truck in October, November, and my second truck shortly thereafter. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. That's pretty much it. Okay, okay. I come from a nursing background, mm-hmm. and I came into trucking. Okay, okay, Ashlyn Davis. Let's do, hold on, wait, quick. I got to get my stuff together, man. Ashlyn Davis, I like that. So, let's let's back up a little bit. You're you're a young twenty eight year old entrepreneur out here doing the damn thing in the trucking field. And and you you was Correct. you you you've been driving for two years. I, I want to I, I want to start at the beginning, but I want to start at the middle. So, the middle part is like, do you do you have your own authority, or do you just own two trucks? I do not have my own authority. I run under someone else's authority because that's easier for me. Less paperwork on my end. Okay. Okay. So you have so you you got your first truck what last year? Yeah, it was last year. All right. So what, well, I got both of both of my trucks um I got last year. Oh, you got one both? one month apart. Okay. What was the uh what was the route that you took to to get your to get your trucks? What what was the route that you well, took? Well, um the route that I took to get my truck, I went through this guy and I leased my truck to him. And that was uh, a lot of people were saying, you know, don't get your truck, don't lease a truck to someone, go and do this and do this. And I've never been one to listen to what other folks tell me. I've always done my own thing. So what I did was I did what worked for me, and I got my truck to someone, and I leased my truck to someone. And that's where I'm at. All right, that so, works best for me. So did you 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 lease it through? So you lease the truck through a company or through an independent? It's a guy. He leases trucks out. Um, I run over with. I do um time freight on the power only side on the A fleet side. Mm-hmm. So I lease my truck from a guy that has a company. Um, through Prime. Okay. Well, it's not through Prime. He has his own authority, but he just does how long we thought. So and that's what works. So he, so he's like, see, he's like other, like other truck drivers, like um, what's that guy name? Uh, what is his name? What is his name? Low Shine Parts. He got, you know, he runs. Well, I'm power. not familiar. 
Yeah, he's he's a YouTuber. So if you if you you know go on YouTube and look him up, he's a power only guy that runs Prime Freight. So the guy that you mm-hmm. hooked, the guy that you hooked up through runs Prime Freight. So you pull Prime's trailers pretty much. I do. Okay. So what was the what was the what was the route of getting the are 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 both trucks leased or is one of them paid off and you they are some, oh both of them pay? I have seven months I have seven months to pay my truck off and I have a um, a year in some like a year to pay my other truck off okay okay so you got so you have someone driving the other truck. I actually have a team that drives the other truck. That yes, that drives the other truck. Oh, okay, okay. So how was you able to how was you able to find the uh, the team drivers to to drive your other truck? Um, I was an instructor at Western Express. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of network. I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people on Facebook. And a guy was telling me he needed someone that needed a chance. And that needed, you know, to make decent money. Mm-hmm. So I spoke with him and his partner, and we took it from there. Oh, okay. And they seem to be a good fit. Okay, okay. So as far they you you feel comfortable with with them so far? I do. Okay, so running both trucks, getting all that cheese, man. God damn it, man. I, I'm I'm feeling you already. I'm feeling you already, man. Let's let's go back to the beginning. Where where are you from? Where where are you from? I'm from a town called Alexandria in Louisiana, Central Louisiana. Okay, so born and raised there. Born and raised in Louisiana. All right. So what was life like growing up in uh, Louisiana? Um, life was hard. It's hard, for lack of better terms. Um, I grew up with one parent. Mm-hmm. So while I tell my mom, like, do everything, you know, go to work. And my uncle kind of raised me. My uncle and my aunt, they kind of raised me. So mm-hmm. I've always been into school and everything. I knew I wanted to own a business one day, but I just didn't know what kind of business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... I mean, I've always been into my study. So. All right. It was hard. I grew up in the project. I didn't have the best of clothes, you know, the best of shoes. My mom, she did what she could with what she had to make do. Of course. And I'm that's grateful what all, for that. But you know, shout out to I all knew single I parents. I wanted better. Definitely shout out to all single parents, man. My mom's was a single parent, so I know I know Most the struggles. Definitely. Yeah, I know the struggles and and the trials and tribulations that uh that a single parent uh go through. You know, luckily for me, my son, you know, had the best of both worlds. So me and his mother was in his life. But as as far as mm-hmm. as far as me growing up, you know, me and my little, you know, my my sister, as we was coming up, you know, we was raised by a single parent. And yeah, I I, I know the I know the struggles and and the uh, and the trials and everything that 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 that's entailed with single parenthood. So uh so with that, you had help. With, you know, she also had help with with family members to to help guide you in the right direction. Oh uh, yes, yeah, she did. Oh, okay, okay, okay. She did. Okay. So before before trucking, you mentioned that you was was in the nursing field. How was that? Before trucking, I was in nursing school. I had a semester left. I'm very open about my story, so I'll just tell it. Go I got caught up with the feds. You got go- wait. I got caught up with fraud. Yeah, I got caught up with fraud with the feds. They indicted me. The FBI indicted me. So that's how I kind of got pushed into trucking because I had to find a way because I wasn't able to do nursing anymore. I had to find a way to make decent money. And so someone kind of told me about trucking, and I was like, you know, I didn't even know a truck had a bed in the inside. So that's how interested I was. So I went into it, and I was like, okay, well, 
I need to get in here and I need to learn everything I want to learn. I need to learn because I'm not just set up to just be a company driver. I need to make some money. Okay. So I learned everything. I took every opportunity that I can. And here we are today. Okay. I want to back up a little bit. Fed. You did. You, you actually did Fed time? No, I didn't do time. Oh, you didn't do. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you got in. Oh, okay. So I got a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How, how, how old was you when, uh, when you got indicted? 26. 26. Okay. So. How did they catch you? What what actually happened? You know, they had to have a lay witness. They had to have a snitch. Mm. Was it was it your partner? Had to be your partner. Had mm. had had to be somebody that you knew. It was somebody I knew. It was some, a few people that I knew that I tried to help. So what was along the way? So, so what was the? What, you said it was fraud. Can, can you be a little bit? Mm -hmm. Can you be a little bit more? Uh, uh, it was fraud against the federal government. Oh, okay, okay. So like taxes and stuff like that. I was trying to help black people get in school and get degrees, but you know how that goes. Oh, damn it, man! So obviously, let, let me let me see let let me see if I can think now. Stop me if I'm wrong, but somebody. They they caught somebody, and then that one person says she was the one that got me into it. Pretty much, that's that's how it went. Oh, uh, yeah, kind of sort of. It was an ex boyfriend of mine. He was kind of jealous, and then one other person. Wow. Okay. Well, at least you got yourself a at least you got yourself a good lawyer, man. You know, so the lawyer was a, was able to. What, what was the outcome? Now, was was there a trial involved or or? What? No, I took a plea deal. Mm -hmm. I took a plea deal. I was smart about it. <laughs> I didn't take it to trial. I, mean, I was guilty. I'm not one of the lie. I was guilty. Oh, okay. I took a plea deal. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you know, you'd still be guilty and, uh, you know, and be like, yo, you know, no, you know how the, not, no, you know how the I, lawyers I, do now. The, of a now, you know how the lawyers <laughs> no, do. The list of a oh, okay. Because but with the feds, there's no such thing as you're innocent. <laughs> you're always guilty. <laughs> yeah. Don't I, don't I know about that, man? See, I had to hurry up and file bankruptcy because I I did some things with the unemployment, but we don't need to go in that story. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into that piece. You know, right? You know, right? I mean, my mom's uh, my mom's needed help, and at the time, uh, I was getting unemployment, but I was working as well, and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Twenty fifteen, they. They did an audit on me and yeah, five years reverted all back. Yeah. But I understand. I've done my share of dirt. Yeah, <laughs> but I had to hurry up and file bankruptcy and I'm 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 pretty cool. I, I should be uh I should be done next year, 2020. I should be done. But so are uh, you a driver as well? Yes. Yes, I am a driver. Okay. <laughs> um all right, so you so you 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 knew uh with that on your record do you you couldn't go back into nursing i mean i can eventually but with the money i'm making now i don't even want to be a nurse anymore <laughs> i can imagine all right so and i have more freedom <laughs> all right so where where did you where where did you go to obtain your your cdls Okay, let's let's get into that. Okay. I went to Swift first. Right. I went to Swift. Right. Um and it was just like it was like a plethora of people there. And I'm like, this is too many people for me to learn anything. I've never touched a truck. I didn't know a truck I, this is this is coming from somebody that didn't know a truck had a bed in the inside of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it I never stepped foot inside of an eighteen wheeler before. Mm -hmm. So um they just had too many people. It was oversaturated with people, and it wasn't enough instructors. So I wasn't learning. I maybe got in the truck two times there. The whole time I was there, mm -hmm. I've gotten in the truck two times. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I left, 
And I went back home to Louisiana to this guy. He worked for FedEx, and he kind of like, you know, him and his, the guy who he was team driving with, he opened a school, and the guy came to work for him, and they taught me everything I needed to know in two weeks. They taught me how to bag up. I already knew how to shift my gears from when I was at Swim. Mm-hmm. So I learned how to bag up. Um, that was mostly what I needed. Did my road test and everything, and I was good to go. Wait. So you so at Swift, you know the the little bit of time that you was there, they they didn't they didn't they wasn't training you in the automatic. I they was only was in the truck. I only no, I was doing this uh, six shift. I was I learned how to. Um, I wanted I didn't want an automatic restriction on my license, so I did six shift. So um, I mean I learned that the guy who taught me how to shift gears, he was great, but they were short on the pad. And it was too many students. It was too many guys just trying to get in and out the truck. And I was like, you know, if you know how to do something, just let somebody that doesn't know how to do it. So a lot of my friends and I, we left. And we went other places. And we got our license. And that was the best thing I could have done because I went to a black-owned. After that, I went to a black-owned school. Okay. And it was only like three people in a class. And at the time, I was going through a divorce of my ex-husband. So the state of Louisiana actually paid for me to go to school and get my license. Okay, so through the Workforce uh, Investment Act. Okay, so at Swift though, you, you, <laughs> I agree with what you said about Swift because I didn't learn their, their brain. Their, that that's how Swift is. That's how that's not only Swift, but that's how uh, trucking companies that that offer schooling is. They they bring in a gang of people. And I'm not even sure that it's only like. Well, see, my aunt, mm-hmm. my aunt just went to prom, and prom was like, and my friend went to prom. I have a, a I, I refer if if you know if their background is good and everything, their license is good. I refer them to prom because my aunt failed a test eight times <laughs> at prom. She failed the back and test eight times, and they were like, "This is the only thing that she well." She had a sorry trainer mm-hmm. at first that didn't teach her anything, but. They were patient with her, and they got out there, and they worked with her, and she's a damn good driver now, and she's, like, over halfway done with her training. So that's why I tell people, like, I'm a good training program. I, that's a great company to start with. Like, Swift, I wouldn't recommend so much because I've been there, and I've been to the bottom of the barrel companies because of, you know, my background. So I work for Carolina Cargo. Epic sales. But I do thank the Lord for giving me those experiences because now I'm able to take on whatever. I don't refuse loads. I go wherever. I'm good. Because when I first started driving for Carolina Cargo, I was in the sixth shift in the Peterbilt, going through the mountains, anything you can, you know, I was I was doing it. I, start, I was start, took off running, running balls to the wall. So I started off running 10 hours a day over there. I wasn't making nothing but like eight hundred, nine hundred dollars a week team driving all those miles. We would drive like uh, over six, like six thousand miles mm-hmm. in a week, and I was making eight hundred dollars a few cents a mile. But I took that experience, and then I went on to Western Express. At Western Express, I did flatbed. From flatbed, I went into um, instructing over there. I took that opportunity because it was building up my resume, you know. Okay. So I moved from Louisiana to Nashville. I stepped out on faith and did that because it was an opportunity at a, such a young age. And, you know, I was young and fresh in the trucking game. And I was like, well, I don't know if too many people get this opportunity to do it. Whether it's Western Express or not, I was still instructing, you know. So I took the opportunity. I made about eleven, twelve hundred dollars $1,200 a week. Got my uh, passenger endorsement. Drove the bus. I did all that. So, um, so over. I felt at, like I was coming stagnant. So over. Mm-hmm. At, so over at Western Express, you you said you was a trainer over there. How how long was it before? No, I was an instructor on the yard. Oh, you was. I an worked instru- for Western Express for. Yeah, I worked for Western Express for a little while, and it just became. I was. It, it was my boss left. And somebody else took over, and we bumped heads. And I was like, I have a license. I don't have to deal with this shit. I can go. Yeah, but- so I went over to PPL, and when I went to PPL, I trained over there for a little while. But then, hold up, that's when. Hold, hold up, I'm. I'm uh-huh. So you you said you was an instructor. So on. So what you was instructing? 
on, I mean, what you was in? Uh, I did road test. I did road test. Oh, okay. I taught the pre-trip class. I did the backing class. I did turn in. So did, things like that. So did you drive for them? I did. At first, I drove for them for a few months. And they wanted diversity, I guess. They wanted diversity. Okay. So I went on to instruct because, I don't know, I'm a transgender woman. So Whoa. they wanted diversity. They see me as diverse. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so they Whoa. wanted me to come hold, hold up. Hold up. Hold, hold up. Hold up. Wait. It, run that by me again. I am trans. Oh, you are? I am. Oh, okay. 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 All right. So they told so, me they wanted a little diversity. They wanted a little diversity in. Okay. And then I went to P after that, I went to PTL. PTL wanted me to be an instructor on their yard. But they didn't pay enough. They were paying like seven hundred dollars a week. Okay. And at the time I lived in Clarksville and I was like, Well, Western Express and Nashville and Murray, Kentucky was about what and what from each other for me. So I was like, Mmm, I don't think I'm going to do that. That's not a good move for me, you know? So I was like, but I'll train people over the road for you. So I went there and I trained over the road. And I got tired. I didn't want anybody in the truck for me because I like to keep my truck a certain way. I like to clean my truck. I like to scrub my floors, get on my hands and knees and scrub my floors. And like, trainees just, and I wouldn't. I don't trust anybody else's driving while I'm asleep. So training is not for me. And that made that made me go harder to get my own. How? But right after PTL. How? So you was mm -hmm. so you was training over. You was training over at PT. Oh shit! You was training. Mm -hmm. You was training over at PTL. How did? Uh, mm -hmm. How? How was you training women or was you training men or both? Well, a lot of men want me to train them, but <laughs> I don't train men because I, that that's just a conflict of interest for me. Oh, okay. And I I just don't feel comfortable training men because I don't need anyone saying, oh, you know, she tried to sleep with me and I didn't know she was trans, even though they did know. That's just too much going on. I don't want to have to record anybody 24-7 on my truck. But they had a lot of women coming in that needed a good trainer, and that's what they told me. They're like, we need women trainers. We need you. So did they – And then so did the women, now so, I don't know if people are – I don't know if people are realizing – but trucking is becoming a trans industry now. Yeah. It's becoming our field. Yeah, you yeah. It's you, becoming our industry. You you is the second you is the second person, uh you is the second person that I have interviewed uh that's that's transgender. And uh <laughs> Wow, I you know I never I, you know I never yeah. I I never noticed that you was you know you was uh you was a transgender woman, especially from the uh from the photos I am. from the photos that I have saw you know like. Well, I mean that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> I've been since I was seventeen. So you, so yeah, but, so um, you, so you training, so you was training women, so they was cool with you, uh. You know, they was cool with of you. Of course, I keep it professional all, all time. Oh, okay, okay. I don't just. I mean, I don't have to. That that's my business. If I'm, I'm trans, I'm trans. That's my business. I don't discuss that at work. But I mean, the people, the appropriate people that need to know, they know it. I'm not secretive about it, but it's just I feel that's not something that we should discuss. Right. I mean, I told all my trainees, and I mean, they were like, okay, that's fine. And then they were like, oh, my God, you're, like, super clean. I'm glad that they, you know, paired me with you because you're super clean. We go get our nails done. We go shopping. We get time to do our makeup, you know. And I was teaching them routine because a lot of women want to drive trucks, but they don't know where to start, and they get intimidated because a lot of people stereotype truck drivers as, Blue jeans, plaid pants, and steel toe boots, and that's not true. I wear dresses for a job. I curl my hair. I wear my makeup. I wear my nails. You know, so a lot of women, they come to me on Instagram, on Facebook, and they let me know, hey, I'm interested in driving. Can you tell me how you got your routine down right. with doing everything you do? How do you stay feminine on the road? Right, right. A lot of that's the number one question, especially from – when in my age, that's the number one question. How do I stay feminine on the road? So, and it is a process because I didn't have anybody teach me on the road. They told me my first job, they told me I was too high maintenance 
and I wasn't going to work out and struggle. Mm. And two years later, here I am right. doing what I started doing, out doing. Doing the damn thing. Doing the damn thing. That's what's up. That is what's up. So when 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 was the um I you know if if you don't mind I, I I would like to ask you like you know like back you know back in the day when did you felt you 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 was a female when when you know when uh ever since I can remember <laughs> ever since I can remember I used to get my ass in because. I used to think I was a Leah when I was growing, <laughs> when I was little. I used to think I was a Leah. And I just like looked up to her. And I used to get beat. And I always liked like Easy Bake Ovens, Barber Dogs and stuff. And I knew who I was. I just didn't know that it was a name for it. I knew I was different. I just didn't know it was a name for it. Okay, okay. And a lot of guys, like when I was growing up in junior high and high school, a lot of people were like, oh, you know, you faggot. And this and this, they they said all kind of stuff. But now it's like, okay, well, she makes oh, you know, she makes this amount of money, X amount of dollars. She's successful. She's pretty. Okay, now I want to shoot my shot. And I'm like, no, you didn't want me when I was growing up. Don't want me now. I hear you. I hear you. So d did you did you go? How how long was the process that that uh, that that you that you went through? How how long was the process? Trans is a lifelong process. You 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 transition every day of your life. It's no set time for a process. It's years and years and years. You get better with time. You age. And you get you you get. It's like a, a wine. Okay. The the more time goes on, the better you get. The more you evolve. Okay. Over time. Okay. The more things you learn. Okay. You know. So you don't. It, it's no such thing as. It's no such thing as, oh, it took two years to transition. Transition is life is a lifelong process. So, is are you complete trans or? I am like I am complete trans. I don't talk about my trans life. I just don't. Oh, okay, okay. That's something that I don't talk about. Okay, okay, okay. I respect you for that. Respect, respect, do respect, do. Um. All right, so being so being uh, a transgender female in trucking, how how has that how has that worked for you? Has people uh, has has people it, been accepting? It is like a lot of men. This is an alpha male dominated industry, of course. Mm -hmm. This is an alpha male dominated industry. So whenever they see a trans woman and they be like, oh, you have trucks, then it's like intimidating to them. And I've even had a man tell me, how can you have something like that before me? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm smarter than you. Maybe I'm more driven than you. It's just crazy. Like, it's very competitive. You have to have thick skin in order to deal with certain things. A lot of people think that we we should finish last or we shouldn't finish at all for that matter. Um, and they should be on top. Uh, uh, it, it, I always say it. you have straight and gay people that are together, and then you have trans. It's like a species of our own, and that's just how it is. So, how do you feel about how, how do you feel about uh, how, how do you feel about uh, LBG? I, I can't never get the damn letters what is it? right. I can't never get the letters right. LGBTQ thank you, plus. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. How do you how how do you, how, how do you guys how do you guys feel you how do you guys feel in the face of uh in the face of this industry now? Because back then, like you said, it was it was cowboy boots, big hats, and and hard legs. Now you got now you got uh, you got female, you got lesbian couple Nick and Carla. You got lesbian couple uh, Eliante and and the other young lady uh, that's out here. The Desire, you know, she's a transgender woman that I just yeah, I know about them. A, week. Um, a, a lot of people, like a lot of a lot of trans women, come to me because okay. Let's just talk about the groups on Facebook. Right. Black mm -hmm. trucker. What is it? Black. Black truckers only. They put me out of the group. What? 
They put me out the yeah. They put me out the group because I found you. I, I found you in uh, in Trucker Beauties. That's where I found you at. I, Trucker Beauty. Monica is my friend. Monica is my good friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Monica is my good friend. Johnny Salsa is my hot sauce. Hot sauce is my good friend. Uh-huh. Uh, the other weekend, he's my good friend. Yeah, but me and Monica talk all the time. A lot of people are like, she never responds to me. And Monica's like, that's because she's my friend. She responds to me. Like, but um, no, like in Black Truckers Only, I can post a picture in there, just like a picture of me. Right. On my truck. Right. And a lot of guys will bash me and will bash me and they will say this and this. And then when I ask, I say, okay, dude, I'm confused. This is a black truckers group. So I'm wondering if all black lives matter in this group or just black straight lives. Like I said black straight lives for 500, Alex, and I was done. So like the lesbian couples, they post their pictures. They say that they delete their pictures. It's like they're saying, you know, they don't discriminate based off of race, free, color, sexual orientation, anything like that. But every time somebody that's from the gay or the trans community posts something, they delete it and they let people bash people. And I feel like I don't argue with anybody. If you're not in my tax bracket, you better go argue with the person at the cash register. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not. I've come to a place and I'm not going to stoop low to your level. And I'm not ignorant. It's a bliss. And I'm not going for it. So, I mean, you feel the way that you want to feel. And a lot of people are like, oh, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with a lot of stuff either. I don't agree with men cheating on their wives, but they still do it while they're on the road, right? I I don't agree with that. I don't agree with infidelity. I don't agree with infidelity, but a lot of people still do it. And another thing about the whole trans thing is if somebody call you a nigger, mm-hmm. a white guy call a black person a nigger, they're going to want to go to every social forum there is and let this be known. They're going to pull out their phone. They're going to record it. They're going to call NAACP. They're going to do the most. It's going to be pandemonium. But, but whenever they call a transfer, oh, that's a tranny. Oh, that's a fat. And this and this, it's funny to other blacks. It's funny. But if somebody call you a nigga, then it's serious. It's a problem. Okay. It's all discrimination. I'll, it's all discrimination. How can you fight for rights? And how can you tell someone, oh, you know, Black Lives Matter, when you're the one putting down another black person? I'm black first, then I'm trans. Okay, okay. I feel you on that. I got to give you a round of applause for that. One. Because I, I, I tend to agree with you because I always said that us, us as black people, you know, we always use the N word. We always use the N word amongst each other. Like, hey, inner, and this, that, and the other, and, you know, my mm-hmm. nigga, and all like that. And it's like a term of endearment. But, it is. But, uh, when, it is when an outside person out of our race use it, you know, and there's two ways to. Not even because a Mexican can say it and they won't get mad. Well, there's two ways to look at it. Now, if if a person outside the race, let's say that's quote unquote down with you or cool with you, they they get the they they get the nigga pass. You see what I'm saying? They'll get the nigga pass. Mm-hmm. They could say they could say it, they could, you know, use it, you know, slap hands, yada yada yada. But but let's say now the other side of that is when another person when another person outside of the race use it, they use it more towards a derogatory ray. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's when you see all the cam like you said, all the camera phones and the and the and the um and uh recording and all like that. And they do everything exactly. they do everything to so, you know my question is to everyone If you can do that and you can record and you can say, oh, this black person lives matter and you can go out and you can protest for that and you can burn buildings for that, why the hell? First of all, it's us killing us. It's us. We are are carrying out the agenda. We are. We are carrying out the agenda. We're killing us. 
It's us killing us. If you think about it, mm-hmm. the transformer who was in a beauty supply store, it went viral on Facebook. Who was that? A bunch of black people trying to fight on her. It doesn't take 16 people to beat up one person. If you're going to fight, have a round by yourself, catch a block. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take all that. It doesn't take over 16 people. It doesn't take over 16 people to fight one person. And then all of these men, but they know who to play with. And that's the thing. They know who to play with. And it's so crazy. You know, in our community, we have the most, I don't know, men in our community. And on the road, I see it all the time. I'm glad I don't play all that. I don't, you know, I used to, I don't do all that. I'm at a place in my life where time to settle down. But in our community, we have so many men that are down low because in the African-American community, being homosexual, being transgender is frowned upon. So that's why we have a lot of suicides going on, a lot of homelessness going on within our community instead of embracing each other, instead of embracing each other. And then whenever I try to offer somebody that's trans a job, the babies are scared to even come and work because it's like, what's going to happen to me when I'm on the road? Is somebody going to kill me in my truck? Right. Right. So I, and I, I'm like, I'm trying to offer you something outside of prostitution, you know, outside of sex work. I'm trying to give you away. I'm trying to teach you the way, but I'm like, I can't blame them because it's like, okay, well, if I go on the road, am I going to get killed? Because of how our community instead of looking out for each other. It's crazy. And a lot of black men would say, trans people don't belong here. We should all be dead. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I guess all of y'all, that, all the ones that say that, that uh, don't know, should you die first? <laughs> I feel like, you know, it, it, it's sad. You want to kill me off? Let's kill you all first. Let's kill all the DL men all first. But that's crazy. So, and it's a lot of that goes on in trucking. So, it's a lot of that that goes on in trucking. Was the, was all that but w- I, was all that w- when was when you before you was getting into trucking and you was thinking about coming into trucking and everything? I'm you, you, fortunate. Did you put all of that in consideration? You know, did you thought about that as well before you came out? But, I'm fortunate that, uh, that I like a lot of guys. Like you know, I, we call it passable. Mm-hmm. I'm very, I'm very passable. But when guys find out, they're like, "Oh, okay, cool," you know. But in the group, they're like, "Oh, this and this." But I'm a, I'm, a, I'm about that bitch. I'm just gonna say, I don't give a damn. My uncle was a drug dealer. My mama was a drug dealer. My grandma was a drug dealer. My aunt was a drug dealer. We all, I grew up around guns, and I, I live by the gun. That's what's up. I live by the gun. So if somebody want to step and want to come on, come out. Because mm. I ain't going down without a fight. And that's just me. That's just how I am. I'm going to do what I got to do. If it's you or me, it's only you. And we're going to get rid of the body. That's what's up. But, um, that is what's up. No. <laughs> I... No, but I just want everybody to get along. Like, it's crazy because it's like we're out here. We're all black people, no matter if we're trans or you're gay or you're straight we're all black people out here um we should you know stick together you don't have to it just because you can't talk to a gay person or befriend a gay person or a trans person don't mean you have to be like that so it's like we should embrace each other and we should help each other out out here we should do that we should help each other out here because we already have everybody else Against us, we're already the eyeballs. They they don't want us out here trucking and owning trucks and owning businesses. They feel like that's what they're supposed to be doing, and we're supposed to be the worker. You know, we're not supposed to own anything. That's how they feel. A lot of them, they feel like that. So why can't we embrace each other and help each other along the way and teach each other what we know? Why can't we do that? And you and you you steady bossing up. I mean, two years in the game, two trucks two trucks and and you have somebody you know you have somebody else driving the other truck you'll be the owner you know you'll be paid off in 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 what 2022 
So, you know, every everything. Uh, 2021. 2021? Actually. Okay, okay. 20, 20, well, this one, I'll be, my truck, I'll be paid off in 2020. All right, and then. Uh, All right, hold on, let me see. 2020, 2021. I'll be paid off before um before January. My truck that I drive, I have a 17. I'll be paid off before um before January. Okay. And then the other, the other truck, 2021, right? Yeah, 2021 with the other truck. Then I'm going to get another truck, and I'm going to employ people. And after my third truck, I'm taking it to the house because I'm going to – my goal, my dream – I want to open up a mixed restaurant, a, a Louisiana restaurant slash bar. But I love blues and jazz and stuff like that. So I want to open up, like, a lounge somewhere. Okay. And I want to be like a mix of style where everybody just come and eat and drink and enjoy good music, you know. So I'm gonna my third truck. I'm getting out. So you and I'm just gonna run it from home and go off into other uh, business ventures. So that's the so that's the goal. So that's the goal for 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 you. Uh, your your three year plan right there, and then you're gonna jump into. You're gonna jump into something. You're gonna jump into something else, man. I, I'm, I'm, I I'm, I'm, I'm liking your drive, young lady. I'm, I'm liking that, man. Well, I'm liking, you. I'm liking your drive, man. I mean, I'm liking your drive. I'm liking, I'm, 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 I'm liking your plan. I'm liking your goal, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm liking, I'm liking everything I'm hearing about you. As, as you know, that you, you got your head on your shoulders, and you. Uh, you 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 not letting none you not letting no negativity stop you. I'm not. I mean, why let negativity stop me? I know you know I'm not one brag on Facebook about how much money I make and everything. I know what I make. I know I live a com a very comfortable life. Okay. And I've created that with the help of the Lord. Um. Now what I actually really want to do is start my nonprofit. That's what I want to do first, more than anything, because as African Americans, sometimes we can't, you know, we're not as resourceful as we need to be. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we're not as resourceful as we need to be. So, with that being said, um, like in Louisiana, a lot of people don't know that with trucking, if you were incarcerated six months or longer, the state of Louisiana will pay for you to get a, a CDL. It will pay for you to go to school. At least the majority of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know where to start. A lot of people don't know you can even go to the DMV and pay fifteen dollars and take the test two times a day for a whole year until you pass it. A lot of people don't know they still go they're behind times they're going to get in the book and studying from a book when it's twenty twenty and everything is on the app. Yep. So I'm gonna start a seminar and it's gonna be called you know the name of my company is Trucker Enterprise. Mm -hmm. So. The name of my seminar is going to be called Truck Like Her. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and it's going to be, I'm going to do like a two-day long seminar. We're going to go through all the questions and the practices that we can go through. We're going to pay for people to go and take the um, permit test. And we're also going to get, if you're convicted felon, then I would like myself and other um, phone operators to link up. And maybe we could donate money in to pay for them to get CDLs because a lot of the trucking industry are convicted felons. So I know they feel where I'm coming from. So we can gang up, put money together, and maybe pay for two or three people to go to truck driving school. The people that don't have backgrounds and everything, great. Get them linked up with companies where they can go make a better living because a lot of women contact me like, oh, my husband needs this, my husband needs this. And I'm one to say, if your husband didn't contact me, if your husband is not right by you and asking questions, I don't feel he's serious. You know? Right. Why have, why have, why have, the, why have the wife contacting the husband is right. the one that because needs the information? A, she wants him to have a better life. But a lot of women want to drive as well. So what I want is I want different owner operators to come and to join me and you know, tell me, just tell your story, motivate somebody. Let's let's reach out and touch some people's lives in a positive way. 
rather than always talking about each other and this and this, let's help our community. Let's help our community. That's what's and let's do make this an every year thing. That's what's where sad. we have a seminar and we gather people and we get them into the trucking business. That's what's up. That is what's up, man. Well, let me ask you this right quick. So, let me ask you this, man, because uh, hopping hopping out of the truck, how, how do how do how do people perceive you when they see you hopping out of the truck? A lot of people think I'm a lot lizard when I get out of the truck. <laughs> Stop it. I had a lady yesterday the other day. I was I was in this little small part of Texas. I went to a diner. And I was telling her, I was like, excuse me, ma'am, I need some chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes. And I was like, oh, let me get some catfish and spaghetti, too, because I don't know if they're going to have food where I'm going. She was like, oh, poor thing. She doesn't know if they're going to have food where she's going. She's hungry. And then we started talking about nursing and stuff like that. And I told her I'm a truck driver and I have two trucks. She was like, oh, you're a truck driver? I thought you were a whore. Oh, wow. And I was like, excuse me? Wow. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. But... It didn't offend me because I'm used to it. A lot of people think I'm a lot lizard when I get out of my truck because I wear my hair. I curl my hair. I wear my makeup. I wear my dresses. I wear my nails, my long nails. I don't let anything stop me from doing what I normally did before I was a truck driver. That's one promise I made to myself. I would not let anything stop me from doing what I normally did for my daily routine. Wow. Wow. You Like I say, you, you are strong. Like I say, you're... Like I said, you're a strong black female truck driver, trans woman. I mean, you you got the whole you you got the whole package going on over there, man. So damn it, man. Um, all right. So you you got all the goals intact. You you. I mean, you life is great for you right now, right? It is. <laughs> it is. Man, damn it, man. All right. Well, that is great, man. That is great to hear. Uh, that That is real great to hear, man. The only thing is, with dating life, dating is kind of like hard to do driving trucks. Because if you have a man that's not a truck driver, he doesn't understand the life. And it's like, oh, what are you cheating on? Or you always worry about, oh, what are you doing at home? Like, well, I, I'm feeling like, okay, it is what it is. Like, I'm just going to chase my money. And I'm going to worry about stacking my money. And whenever somebody comes along and makes what I make, then we can go from there. Okay. So what other groups, what other Facebook groups other than uh Trucker Beauties and the one that uh, they put me out of they put me out of let's see, black truckers only, they put me out of all truckers united. Uh, I'm I'm in. like all home folks. I'm in um hot sauces group, uh Hawthorne's Corner, I'm in his I'm in his group. Uh, I'm in Candy Red. We went to Candy Red, and now she's from uh, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. Mm -hmm. We went to um, Swift together, and Jackie Leverage came back, and she has a trucking group on Facebook. I'm in her group, and I'm in Monica's group, and that's pretty much it because I mess with those who mess with me, and I'm very, I'm busy. Like I'm really busy. Like I have my loads I have to worry about. I have my driver's load I have to worry about. Then their home time, then I have to worry about their pay and everything like that. Then I have to worry about my home life. Like, it's a lot of stuff I have to worry about. So what? I don't really focus on people, you know, on groups. So the two, so I, I, I actually, so the say? two groups, uh, the, what was that? Black, Black Truckers United. And the other one is what? I, I, I I'm, Black truckers only and all truckers. All right, so all ATU and BT. All right, so black BT whatever. Black truckers only. I'm familiar with that. I'm not sure if I'm in that group or not. Black truckers united. Uh, I know all truckers. I mean all all truckers united. I know who's uh I I know who runs that group. The the guy from the Zello. I I forgot his name because I I was when I was active. I'm on Zello too, and in Zello, let me tell you something. I'm in K Will's group. K Will, that's yeah, K Will, yeah, that's the one that runs ATU. I don't think K Will runs that. K Will doesn't run that, but K Will has a truck on Zello called All, all truckers, truckers Welcome. Okay, All Truckers. Okay, All Truckers Welcome. Yeah. yeah, but even in that group, it's like they're all it's 
they all have like derogatory yeah, things. They, yeah, they do. Like they all. They all do. And <laughs> yeah. They all have derogatory things saying, I'm like, why not uplift each other? And if somebody has a question to ask, you know, ask a question to you, why not answer it? Why do you have to be like, oh, post your year to date and this and this? That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. If somebody doesn't have the same year to date, that you have, why not let's help them get up to the year to date that you have. Let's mentor our people and let's bring our people up to where we are and stop bragging and boasting about what we have and pull somebody up. We're gonna reach we need to reach one and teach one and that's not what happened. You know, a lot of groups that out that I was in, you know what I'm saying, we we supposed to we, we supposed to come together, you know what I'm saying, and 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 do something. And make something and make something, but not everybody is on the same page. Mm -mm. You know, not everybody is. But you can ask for blessings and you said, you know, cursing other people. It, it doesn't work like that. Like you have you reap what you sow. If you want if you want to reap a good harvest, you have to sow a great seed. OK, that's what's up. You, you can't expect you can't expect to grow and to elevate. If all you're giving out is negativity, you're gonna remain stagnant. You're gonna because easy come easy go. See, so you you're gonna remain stagnant. See, you like you're not a humble person. You, you like you like me in a way because I don't like all that roasting. You know that I, I don't like all of that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's cool to to a certain extent, but damn it, man, we're some grown ass people, and and you be on there listening like. Really, y'all sound like fucking kids, you know. And I'm like, nah, this, this, this ain't, this ain't the place for me. Every time I go in a room on Zillow, the conversation is always about me. It's always about the trans woman. It's always about they say the tranny. It's always about me. Every time I go in it, it's always about me. It's never about oh well, you know, how can we help this person get into this? It's always about me. That's just what they do. And I feel I tell them I say somebody that's not interested in something. Don't talk about stuff as much as y'all do. I, my synopsis is y'all all are interested because this is all you talk about. Hmm. It fascinates y'all. Got it, got it. And that's just how I feel. Look. And I'm not sorry for what I'm saying. I'm telling yeah, that. Gotta like, look at it that way. It fascinates you. Definitely, man. Definitely. So, how, what, all right. So, before we get on up out of here, man, because this is a great conversation, man. I, I, again, again, thank you for coming on. <laughs> But uh, what what Thank what you. suggestions or what advice do you have for for trans women that's interested that's coming into the uh, that's that's coming into this uh, game? My advice to any trans woman that's coming into the trucking game is first get you a gun, baby. Get you a gun. Learn how to shoot and learn how to be precise on your aiming. No, I'm just kidding. But um. No, but go after your dreams. If you know that it's something that you want to do, you know, then go after it. Reach out to somebody. Don't be scared to reach out. Because a lot of times, as trans women, you know, we're like, oh, well, you know, this person's just going to say this about me and say this. You don't never know until you try. So reach out to a person. Ask the person questions. And see what you get from it. If that person doesn't give you what you need, move on to the next person until you get what you need. And always follow your dreams and always set goals for yourself and achieve those goals. That's the, that's the advice that I can give. That's what's up. Don't worry about what people are going to say about you. Don't worry about how people look at you. Because in order to be successful, sometimes in the plan, you have to look like a fool. Sometimes you look like a fool and other people don't know what's going on. But you know that greatness is in the making. So... All I can say is sometimes you have to be willing to be the fool up front to be the person that's successful in the end. That's some great advice right there. That's my advice. That is some great advice right there. Well, 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 Truck Her Enterprise. Yes, sir. Miss Ash Lee Dav Davis, right? Davis. Davis, right? Ashlyn Davis, yes. Davis, yes sir. Thank you very much for coming on to the show this evening, 
and uh, talking about, you know, talking a little bit about your life and your experience out here. I really do appreciate it. How can uh, how, how can the people find you on social media? Uh, they can go to my Facebook as Davis. A-S-H-D-A-V-I-S. My second page is at Lynn Atasia Davis. Okay. Or uh, they can find me on Instagram at C underscore me underscore her underscore Joker. God damn it, man. You know what? See, I keep telling. Let me turn this down. I keep telling people about all these underscores, man. All these underscores. Like, okay, so is she underscore what? Me underscore her underscore trucker. Is she me her trucker? She underscore me underscore. I know. I probably need to change that. I probably need to change it to truck her. Uh, like, let me see. Okay, here it is. It's crazy. Here... I, don't go in... I don't go on Instagram a lot. All right, hold on. Here <laughs> it is. Wait. Uh, here, I think this is it. She underscore. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I, okay. All right. I hit that follow button for you. Yeah, I don't go on Instagram. I don't go on Instagram right. a lot. My main source of people reaching out to me is like on Facebook. That's just what they, they reach out to me on Facebook in different groups. Like I'm in this nail group mm -hmm. and a lot of ladies in the nail group are interested. I've got over 500 inboxes just this week alone on women asking me, how can they join in on the trucking group and how do, where do I go get my nails done at? I network. When I go places, I network. Like I go to a different city. I'm in the trucking group. I'm in, I'm in a nail group. We have over 300,000 members in there. So with that many people, is somebody that's bound, you know, to be like, oh, your truck driver, okay, I'm going to get my nails done. I was in Dallas this week. And a lady was like, oh, your truck driver, come on, just get your nails done. I'm getting you this count, this, 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 because you drive trucks. You know, thank you. I just network with people. And that's why I said I have over 500 messages in my inbox. I'm trying to respond to everybody and tell them how to get into the trucking business. They all want to know. How can they come and get some of this money? That's what's up, man. That is what's up. Well, I see. Uh, I, I got you right here on uh, on Instagram. See, I fuck with Instagram. I, I don't do uh, Facebook or like that. But uh, definitely, I will definitely tag your Facebook, uh, your Facebook in the description when I make up when I edit all this up, man. So tag both of my pages. Oh now. yeah, I, I sure will. I definitely <laughs> will, man. So again, thank you for coming on. Thank you. All right. All right. So that's 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 Ashlyn Davis truck her enterprise Correct. if you guys interested in coming on to the show definitely hit me up in the in the pot i mean in the in the gmail that's lockout men podcast at gmail.com or you can go over to instagram and hit me up over there or you can give me a call if you guys have anything that you want to talk about anything that you want me to talk about definitely throw it in the comment below or hit me up in the gmail with that said, I thank you guys for coming on. If you like this content and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. That's what's up. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank uh, Miss Truck Her for coming on. Me and her, Truck Her, is gone. We're out of here, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Peace.